Can I tell you something gross? Yeah. My hands get sweaty and warm enough to where it'll heat up and moisturize the calluses so that way they're easy to peel. Oh. I don't know. You don't think that's gross? No, but we should probably start. Hi, guys. Um, <laughs> welcome back to Tattoo Home Records, where we talk about Tattoo's life and everything in between. Sometimes we talk about her very sweaty hands, which if you guys have been with us for any period of time, you should know that she has very sweaty hands. It's and a if main you're topic of discussion. Watching us on, oh, I'm Gaia, also known as Lou. This is Callie. Also known um, as Cal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cal, what is it? Uh, Cali loves salsa. Yep. Um, and then Cal if Lista you're like, salsa. hey, you guys are wearing the same exact stuff that you wore last time, that's because we are doing another, I'm not going to officially say after, um, hours or whatever the fuck we decided after to name hours. this thing, but basically we have lots of shit to do and we're going to be gone next week. Yeah. So today we are recording two episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, we do not have a plan. I just started the recording recording of this because she started being like can I tell you something gross and so I just did it and then yeah made her here we are yep talk about her sweaty palms which are I still I still feel like you're missing an opportunity calling them self-lubricating that's disgusting (laughs) that is the worst the way you feel about DIY girlies is the way I feel about self-lubricating palms (laughs) you know how hard it is like Trying to, like, just date in general, but on top of it, no, like... No, because if you... I think if you say self-lubricating palms, that makes you more sellable. I think it makes me more sellable to the wrong people. <laughs> there we go. How about that? That It, it makes me Maybe more sellable to the wrong people. self-cleaning paws? No. Pause. <laughs> no, we're such a pause. I'm okay with pause. We're getting closer. But no, I just don't want to... It's hard because, like... Your moist mittens? My mo- Ew! <laughs> Ew! <laughs> it's it's you know just You're, dating in general. I her you, hands are getting sweatier the more we talk it's, about they're this. They're wet. Um, it's it's <laughs> hard because it's glistening. like not only do I sleep with my eyes open, but like in summer when people try to hold my hand, every single one of my partners have been like, "Oh my god," and like stop holding my hand. I'm like, I'm sorry. They're really gross. Yeah, I can't help it. It's just yeah, I don't like to share a barbell with her for that very reason. That's true, but you do it anyways because you're very brave. Yeah. Because I'm weird about sweat. Like, I get really, really grossed out by it. I hate that you have to hug people after a workout and they're sweaty and you're sweaty. Mm-hmm. And then your fucking toxins are touching each other. And I'm really, like, <laughs> akin to people's, like, the smell of their sweat. It's what I don't miss about going to a CrossFit gym. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm shuffling all around if you're watching me on YouTube. I can't get comfy. My hip flexors um, are in so much pain. But it's my arm. My arm just keeps going numb. Oh, God, um, that's awful. So, yeah, like, and then I can smell you on me, like, when someone's hugged me after a sweaty workout. And it's hard because I want to hug you, but then I walk around. Oh, I thought that was your foot. I was like, how did your foot get so furry? Ew! <laughs> <laughs> Bailey's underneath the table. For no, it's, it's your wondering. foot. It's, I don't have furry feet. <laughs> you have furry feet. That's one thing that you I don't have. You have tiny have. hobbit feet. I don't. <laughs> First of all... Second of all, um, yeah, smell. It's yeah. like that with tattoos as well. Mm. Um, when I tattoo someone who has, like, BO for an extended amount of time, and that's pretty much it. Like, it's always, like, the people that I have to spend, like, at minimum four hours with. Um, there's some lingers around me, yeah. and I'm like, I swear I don't smell bad. Mm-hmm. I swear I don't, I've just been all over someone who unfortunately does. It sucks. Which it sucks. I don't understand that, because I'm like, why would you not take a shower? Like... I don't know either. I like, instantly that is question of the century always. Yeah. Why don't you if, take a shower if you're if I'm tattooing your feet? Like, please for the love of God, like don't fucking go on a seven mile hike beforehand. Like, holy shit, dude. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying you gotta get a pedicure, but like, wash your toes. I'm not saying that you have to do anything. It's just like I don't know. Like, just uh, that morning, just be like, huh? Let me investigate, and if the investigation leads to nothing, then you're good. And if the investigation leads to oh, shit, I should probably wash my feet before I go in. There you go. Simple. Toe fluff. That's what kills me. Toe I need you to get, yeah, from the socks. Yeah, I need you to clean that out first before you put your foot. Because I'm not weird about feet, to be very clear. Yeah, you're not. I'm not weird about feet either. I I don't mind them. I mean, you're like weird about feet. I fucking hate you. I'm not weird about feet. Oh, my God, wait, you have to tell them about your newest boyfriend. (laughs) My newest boyfriend? Yeah, you oh. imaginary. You guys. Okay. Let me be very clear. I understand. Conventionally, I'm like a six 
Well, t- I'm p- totally fine with that. Could be season six, whatever. But oh my this God, bitch guys. loves her from some twos and threes. Even some like imaginary He's not character. Ugly. He is ugly. He um, is not. She has like a new crush on some like fake character. For those of you guys who are watching, I'm pulling him up right now. Um, and he's. He's beautiful. He's, his name is Asterion. Uh, I think he, I'm saying his oh, name right. Oh, I was right. like, does he have a... I thought I thought he had a social media account. No, his name is Asterion. If you guys can see it, for the people who are watching, he is from Baldur's Gate. It is a video game. Um, and it's very D&D centric, so it's very cool. But I haven't played it yet, but that's fine. I've just been watching gameplays and uh, reading fan fiction. And yes, I read fan fiction. And yes, I'm proud of it. Wait, I don't care anymore. Why what? the toot on that? Do people... People get weird. Well, okay, it used to be a weird thing. Now it's not. Why but do it people used to be, care? It used to be a hush hush thing. Like no one ever talked about it. But no. About fan fiction. Hmm. Yeah. Why? I don't know. I don't know. Actually, I think it's just another way to like shame nerds. Um. But if you like about it, here's the thing. What's on your sleeve? Lift up your arm. What is this? What is this? Fluff. You got fluff. Okay. Okay, I got fluff on You me. got de-fluff. Don't worry about it. Um, Thank you. Okay, yeah. so, sorry. So, Sterion, he's... Um, ADD. So, I realized that I am repeating my Twilight era because he <laughs> is also a vampire. And he's gorgeous. And he's stunning. And his dialogue is so funny. And he's so sarcastic. Anyways, I posted on my private page um, a story. And please don't follow my private page. Uh, anyways... <laughs> A uh, story about how I need Asterion. I love him. I want him to be my Were you talking about him peeling forever. potatoes earlier? That The fan fiction, yes. Yeah. I made him peel potatoes in the fan fiction. But anyways, I didn't write it. I'm reading it right now. Um, Wait, anyways. what do you mean you, ma- you made him, but you're not... I, I'm not writing the fan fiction. I'm reading it. I'm just but letting then you know what happened. how did you make him? Because it was written in the... In oh, me okay, terms. okay, okay. Yes. Anyways. But is it smutty? Um, there was one smut chapter, yes. Yes! I know. I love, okay, can I, yes. sorry, no, you continue and then I'll talk about it. Uh, okay, mine. I only have one thing to say. Basically, I posted him on my story and Joe, uh, my friend Joe hit me up and said, no, he is the worst. He's awful. He thinks he's so funny <laughs> and he's a dirty little liar. And I said, I love him, Joe. He's just my type. And Joe's like, no, you need to trust me on this. He's the fucking worst. And I'm like, I don't care. I love him. I want to be with him. Anyways, that's it. So that's this is when you need to call your therapist. When she said, hey, when you're attracted to someone, you need to call me. It's different when it's your fictional. picker's broken. He can't actually. And once again, your picker is broken. He can't help me. He can't uh, hurt me. He definitely can't help me. Anyways. <laughs> you're just cha- he can't help you. You're like channeling him. I want to like, be I manipulated by him. Yes. Oh, um, God, I love him. Yeah, I had. Uh, so... For anyone who doesn't know, I don't know why you wouldn't know. I listen to audiobooks, mm-hmm. and I haven't listened to an audiobook in a while. Um, oh my god! Tell them about your fucking audiobook. <laughs> so I was listening to, um, it's I think it's Colleen Hoover, mm-hmm. um, Ugly Love. She's got some good books out there. Ugly Love. Um, yeah, I was like, that's a weird title, whatever. But it was one of those that like, oh, boy likes girl, girl likes boy, but they can't be together. And it's like, mm. um, he is friends with the dude. And then it's like his kid sister comes to stay. And I say kid sister. It's she's she's an adult. Little Don't sister. Worry about it. Yeah. Um, younger sister. Yeah. Younger sister. But like everyone's an adult. No Are they deal. the ones in love? Yes. And that's why it was really cute because it was little stuff like. Uh, it reminded me of when Caboose and I got together because mm-hmm. it was like the brother was like at a restaurant. And he was like getting like the table situated talking mm-hmm. and the dude's like whispering like stuff in her ear. And then they're like touching pinkies and like and like underneath the table, like I touching like that. where it's like, oh, it's, yeah, their fingers brushed and they felt electricity yes. and had to hide it. Like, but then oh. I thought because then it got like a little bit smutty. And usually when it's smut, I'm like, oh, fucking I'm not in it for that. Uh-huh. Like. I never, and I'm not judging anyone who does. I just don't, like, I like a mystery. I do like romance. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. Sorry, you guys. I'm hella burpy because of the Alani. <laughs> Carbonation, I don't that go. Shit. <laughs> um, no, there's still tons of it, but I just okay. don't drink a lot of carbonation. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, I just so personally, good. well, it was written so well that, like, it was like, yes, this is good smut. But then the way that she would, like, describe things, I was like, I have not heard it described like this before. So I really appreciate it because I was like, oh, this is not like the rinse repeat, like his member. His yeah, throbbing his member, throbbing yeah. member, like none yeah. of that. So I was like, oh, wow. And it would like give you just enough that you'd be like, OK, well, I'm a little bit bored of this now. And then like it would go on with the story. But the story was so good that mm-hmm. I was like, look, I can usually if there's too much smut, I'll just be like, I'm just not into it. Yes. Because it, it was, just pulls me out. So the, what I'm reading right now, it was nice because the. Was re- she a maiden? 
No. No. I'm part of the... Stable. <laughs> no. So I'm part of the, um, whatever it's called, like, gosh, D&D players, if you guys ever listen to this and... The campaign, I guess, yes. the team that you... Yes, yeah. I grew up playing D&D. There so. we go, yeah. So I'm part of the team, right? Okay. So I, like, actually fight, like, fucking goblins and shit. But anyways. Um. <laughs> but anyways. <laughs> anyways, it was Just nice. Casually fighting some goblins. Because, you know, typically fan fiction writers, like, they go off on the smut. Like, for the most yeah. part, it's like, all smut. No, this is, like, pretty much story. And it was the same thing with the smut. It was, like, maybe... It wasn't wasn't even, like, half a chapter. It was, like, a passage. Mm-hmm. Um, passage. A couple of passages, whatever. And it was like you mean paragraphs. Paragraphs, you know, whatever. It was enough to be like, oh my God, sexy. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah, that's how this was. But like not enough to make me lose focus. And then yes. we went right back into like the story. And it yeah. Was great. And so, yeah, typically fan fiction writers pop off and like, good for you guys. Like, I love, okay. <laughs> well, that's how I felt about when I <laughs> accidentally stumbled onto that furry porn. And I was like, mm-hmm. like all those pictures. I'm like, but the quality of the art is phenomenal. Yeah. I'm like, I can ignore the genitals. Can like, we, the lighting. Can we you talk guys. about furry? artists they're actually great fucking amazing talented like, yeah talented like, human beings so good the cell shading if anyone wants any of that shit tattooed i will gladly because like yeah the shit the fuck out the of furries. Le- yes, yes i will tattoo the shit out of some furry like mm-hmm. artwork yeah that's already been done because it is stunning and i want so bad to be <sighs> able to like tattoo that it's gorgeous it is gorgeous it's it's um I don't know. It's really interesting because I, so on Twitter, most of the people that I follow are like artists, like comic book artists and like online. I thought you were going to say furries. No, but <laughs> some of them are like, hey, <laughs> so I make a living, like I, I'm a horror based artist, but like, I'm going to be real with you guys. I took on my first like furry porn commission and they paid me up to like a grand to yeah. do this. And I was like, whoa, dude, there's money in like the furry porn industry, which is wild. So crazy. But yeah, I love me some like smut. It's fun. Every now and again, it's great. But love a fan fiction. I'm, I'm too lazy to use it for like actual like. Winking? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, nah, dude. Like dyslexia does not fucking make that that so shit that would super have fun. Deter. Yeah. Um. So like, I've never been like, oh, let me read this. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I crashed through that book. Um. Quick. Yeah, it was nine hours, and I finished it in less than a day. Mm-hmm. I started it day before yesterday and finished it yesterday. Well, you just said it was um, so good that you had to keep going. I, I needed to know. I needed to know because obviously he had a tragic backstory mm-hmm. and that author is really good about like, here's the present. And then like, she runs a parallel story of like their history of like why Love they're that. in that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's always her like script. And I quite appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Um, but then she's like such a good writer that you get like sucked in. Where I'm like, but okay, I mean, I kind of get where their story is going because she doesn't do a whole lot of like twists and shit. Mm-hmm. But then I'm like, but I need to know about his backstory. So like, tell me more. And it was just a classic case of like, boy likes girl, girl likes boy, boy loses girl because he's an idiot. But then boy has like an emotional arc and it's beautiful and they get together. Oh, we love to hear it. Yeah. See, that's Dude, he got like emotionally intelligent. It was great. He was like, the patriarchy will not win over me. I will become emotionally intelligent. Fucking I will tell my life. See, nothing sexier than that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) Nothing sexier than a well-written male character Mm -hmm. that understands emotions. But I love it when they start emotionally mature. Like they're like kind of assholes at first, Mm -hmm. which says a lot. I should probably talk to my therapist about that. At, well, at I think that's story, that end of the day, like, bad boy trope. Like, that's yeah. what that is, is that, like, he's emotionally immature. And kind but of a then, dickhead. And almost kills yeah. you because he drinks your blood. And then, yeah, totally. Totally wrong. Maybe not that part. <laughs> Mine's a little bit more grounded in reality. Mine's, like, straight Mine's an up, airline like, pilot. He's She's a 200-year-old, like, fucking, fucking vampire who I let drink my blood and now we're fucking and it's great. I never got into like that fantasy like world and I, mm-hmm. it makes me sad that like I just am not in it but I'm very much just like based in like essentially reality that's fair we all have I, our things. I want to be like yeah fantasy stuff but I would like try it and the moment they mention magic my brain's just like mm, I'm bored now that's fair that's totally fair I've always I love fantasy Love it. I'm surprised you don't play D and D. I oh my I guess god. You don't have time to. I a don't have time to. Like that's the biggest issue. And like I I would love to do it, but I don't have time for it. Um. B, 
I also just don't have anything to play Baldur's Gate on, but I think they're going to release it to like the consoles that I have. So eventually when I get to that point, I'll actually get to meet my boyfriend and court him. <laughs> and then you'll find out he's a dick. He turns into an asshole. Like, like TikTok has been very clear on that. He turns into a fucking dickhead, but like, I'm still here So for exactly it. your type. Exactly my type. Just what you love. Exactly. So that's what's going on in my life. I'm not dating. I'm just dating a fake <laughs> vampire boy from a video game. It's fine. What's been going on in your life? Uh, Nothing. How's couples therapy? Oh, couples therapy is great. We just learned a new, um, like, trick on... Ooh, I guess it's not a trick. Do share. Okay, so it's a tactic for communication. Y'all. Wait, can I just say how funny it is that one of us is reading fan fiction about their fake boyfriend and the other <laughs> one's going to go <laughs> That's, that's life. life. That's, that's life. life. So that's where we're at. Um, but anyways. So we didn't get to dig into because we've been going through our meta emotions. Mm -hmm. And last time she's like, okay, we can continue on the meta emotions. Hold up. Hold up. I'm yes. so sorry to pause. Mm -hmm. Meta emotions. Yeah. So like the big emotions. Okay. Like happy, sad. So the big yeah, umbrella like term. Like what happiness is, sadness. And you okay. go through like, what is the story you tell about this now? Like, how do you currently feel about this? What is a story that relates to it in childhood? Like, what wow. were you taught about, like, we, sadness in childhood? So you kind of talk um, about a scenario, and then you talk about what was your meta emotion to that scenario? No, you. she just dives into the meta emotions okay. first. Because you need to know, because, like, the issue with a lot of people when it comes to their emotions is that they don't know what emotion they're feeling. Yep. So you need to know wh where the stories are behind these emotions first. Mm -hmm. And, of course, like, everything, that biggest trope in, like, therapy is everything comes back to your childhood, but hate to break to y'all, it all comes back to your childhood. It's so true. Um, yeah. So, like, the one that she had brought up before was pride that stumped both of us because it was like, hey, you know, she brought about sadness as well. And we both talked about, like, what sadness was in our childhood. And I was like, well, sadness, you know, and his family wasn't allowed. I won't get into that because that's his story to tell. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, in my family, it wasn't allowed. So, therefore, sadness could only be portrayed as anger. Like, the mm. only accepted emotion around that is anger. Right. So, for me, a lot of times, like, when I am sad, it will come out as anger. So, then people are like, oh, well, you're never sad. And I'm like, well, I walk around mad a lot because I can't express sadness. Mm -hmm. um, and because, like, I get very hung up. The part of me that has, like, ADHD gets very hung up on the injustice of things that make me sad. So, then it makes me angry. So, totally. I'm expressed that way but we talked about pride and she was like let's talk about like pride in your household and like if you did something well were people like expressing that like hey i'm proud of you but both him and i when she was like let's talk about pride she's like so what are your current feelings around pride and we both just sat there like mm, what and it was just crickets and i was like okay so this is slightly embarrassing i don't know what you mean as pride because i think of it as like you know the seven deadly sins like pride is bad and she's like no it means like the act of, like, someone being proud. Like, if you accomplish something, do you feel proud? Mm -hmm. And then you go into that, like, in childhood. And, like, my, you know, I grew up in a pretty toxic environment. So it was very much, sorry, I'm fucking with my clothes about a lot. This fucking onesie got really itchy. Um, ADHD. But, <laughs> yeah, um, she talks about, like, or, like, asking us about it. So I was discussing mine. He was discussing his. And it was very much that, like, neither one of us grew up in a household where people express, like, pride. So if you did something well, well, that was oftentimes, like, undermined. And, like, for mine, for me in particular, it was that, like, my clients in South Carolina knew about this. Where it was, like, please don't compliment me in front of my mother. Because if you say anything, she is going to break me down. So anytime that, like, I did something well, it's also partly why I suffer with, with like, dealing with compliments is because, like, something bad is going to happen. So if you were, like, oh, my gosh, Gaia did this, like, beautiful tattoo, then there would be lots of cutting remarks to follow that. Mm -hmm. And, like, I hadn't necessarily remembered that. I just remembered that I was, like, yeah, like, you just knew not to, like, be proud of something because it was always, like, get off your high horse. And then Caboose had brought that up of, like, well, you know, your mother would blah, 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 blah. Um, which the therapist's face at that was, like, Jesus Christ. So <laughs> that's, like, the only downside of therapy is sometimes you get to be, like, yeah, that happened. And then they look at you of, like, oh, fuck. I love that's those moments. Bad. I love those moments, though. Do you not like them? 
Um, not necessarily. I love it because it's so validating. Like when I say something and my therapist goes, that's really sad. And she writes it down. <laughs> I'm like, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like that's really funny. You're like, but oh also, shit! Thank you for seeing and acknowledging it. But yeah, so we've been going through the meta emotions. So then it's like where, like, what that story was when you were a child, and then like now, like mm-hmm. where that story is now in your life, and like how you handle that, and like now I'm like, well, I'm able to be proud of myself, but that's like relatively like new. Where I'm like, okay, well, I'm a hard worker. Like now I can be like, I'm a good friend, but that's because I also have like a group of people around me that help remind me of those things to be like, yes, you're allowed to be proud of these things. Yes. Um, but then, so we've been going on that and we still have a couple more emotions that we have to do, but I was like, well, cause I think we still have anger, which is what I'm like, fuck, I don't necessarily want to get into that one. Cause that one's going to be gross. Um, but then she asked like, okay, well, do you want to work on conflict resolution this time? Or do you want to continue with the meta emotions? Wow. And I was like, I whatever, like I want to do meta emotions, but I know that we'll probably benefit more from conflict resolution. Mm-hmm. So we learned about conflict resolution mm-hmm. and it's the fucking craziest shit, you guys. It's going to sound really like obvious, but I really genuinely feel like do share. very few people are actually doing it. Um, so I would say, hey, like, how are you feeling about something? You would then tell me how you're feeling, Mm -hmm. and then I will repeat back to you what I'm hearing. So you asked me, how do you feel about the carrot cake? And then what if I say... Yeah, yeah, let's use a real example, though. So, like, like, uh, walk me through the, like, the feelings around, like, what you had, or, like, the frustration. Mm -hmm. Have we had... What's, like, the latest thing of conflict we've had? Of conflict? I guess, like, again, being the weakest person on the team. So we're just going to run this through. You're comfortable talking about this? Totally. Okay, so we're just going to run this through. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Tell me about how you feel about being the weakest link. I feel so uncomfortable. I hate I hate being in this place because I want to pull my weight, but I, I'm not doing that. Okay. So what I'm hearing is you're feeling really uncomfortable. You're repeating back. About yeah. being the weakest, like, link. Mm-hmm. Can you tell me why you feel like the weakest link? Because I have the least experience and I have to constantly ask questions and constantly be guided through these things. Okay, so you feel like that you have to ask more questions and mm-hmm. that you have to be constantly guided through. Mm-hmm. Am I understanding that correctly? Yes. Okay. So then why is that, like, such a painful thing for you? Ooh. Um, gosh, because we I can was stop supposed to be an A point. student. I'm, okay. I, I was thinking about this, actually. I was, I'm was i supposed to be the A-plus student, right? Mm-hmm. So it's hard to not be an A-plus student. Okay, so... <laughs> You Why am I crying, like, bitch? That's okay. We can, we can stop <laughs> no, at any you're point. Good. No, okay. I'm, I'm good. Um, I'm, we're rolling through this. Okay. Um, so you feel like you have to be an A-plus student, mm-hmm. and by asking questions, you're yes. not being an A-plus student? Yes. So why is it such a big deal to be an A-plus student? I think, honestly, just because that, that's how it was my entire childhood. Okay. So that's where, like, the worth and the pulling your own weight comes in is being self-sufficient and not asking for help and not asking to be guided through these things. Okay. (laughs) So you feel like what I'm getting, what I'm thinking there, like what I'm getting from that is that Mm -hmm. you feel like by asking questions, you are not being like worthy. Yes. I'm not being self-sufficient. I'm not being a strong part of the team. Okay. Okay. Because if I were strong, then you would tell me to do something and then I would know how to do it immediately and then just do it. Okay. Um, is there anything else that you want me to know about that? No. <laughs> and you <laughs> I don't feel think so. seen, understood? You feel like I understand? I do, yes. Okay. I, I, feel, I feel like, do you have any questions on it? Well, wait, that was the first part. So mm. that's the first part. There we go. <laughs> I repeat back to her what I'm hearing. Whoa. And so especially when you're in conflict, <laughs> yes. oftentimes it'll get twisted. Mm-hmm. So like if I were feeling defensive about that, I might reply, so you feel like I'm not helping you enough. There we go. And then you'd be like, no, I feel like this. So mm-hmm. you're speaking in eyes and then I'm trying to repeat back to you to make sure that I'm understanding what you're saying. So you're also saying eyes? So what I'm understanding is that... Yes. Okay. So what I'm understanding is this. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, we can play it, like, going bad here in a second. So they get, like, both examples. Cool. Yeah. Um, (laughs) So we'll we'll repeat that same thing, but I'm going to be defensive about it. I am 
worry. No, you just you just worry about okay. you. Okay, I'm gonna cool. I'm gonna intentionally. I just need you to know. I'm gonna Perfect. intentionally get this wrong. Yes. Um, just to be clear, it's not wrong. It's just that like I'm gonna intentionally misunderstand her because we've already discussed this like thing with her before. Mm-hmm. Um, and that way you can see what happens when it doesn't go as smoothly. But basically, the key is I'm gonna repeat back to you. Yes. What I'm hearing, mm-hmm. like if it's like going well. Or even not. Because the whole point is for me to understand where you're coming from. Right. And then I end it by saying, hey, is there anything else you want me to understand? If there's any questions I have, you see how I ask questions to, like, dig deeper. Mm -hmm. And then it will get reversed. So in that case, like, if we had conflict around these cabinets, Mm -hmm. then I would, then you would say, okay, how do you feel about this? And then we would do it the other way. Right. So once you feel fully understood, you then, then have the space okay. within you to understand me. So yes. if my frustration was like, oh, I feel upset that like that you need more guidance on this, mm-hmm. then we would dig into like why I need, just to be clear, I don't feel that way. Mm-hmm. Um, th- then we would dig into that. Right. So then you're able to like understand where this person's coming from. Right. And I'll explain the example of what Caboose and I did. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to show you guys because you see how, like, in that we're able to then you feel more seen and understood. Right. And then I could then be like, okay, well, I feel like I don't I don't see you as the weakest link. Mm -hmm. I don't see you as, like, not being an A student because for me, just like I said in our last episode, The experience of doing things together and learning and growing together are more important than the end result. And like that, I came from that conclusion because Caboose and I had had that same thing. Mm -hmm. Like we had done that same piece back and forth, which is also why I now won't say that we're like fighting. But I'm like, oh, hey, we have run into a piece of conflict. Let's do that exercise. And it's fucking dope because just the last couple days while we've been working on these projects together, Mm -hmm. we've had more understanding of, like, why we would fight in the past about them because of, like, his insecurities and my, like, misunderstandings and then his brain, like, twisting what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So I'll go into that in just a second. But Mm -hmm. let's do this the bad way. Right. Okay. So how are you feeling about the cabinets? Oh, I feel like um, I'm the weakest link and I'm really frustrated. I don't know what I said. That's fine. Yeah. No, just tell me, like, how you feel about cabinets. Okay. Like, um, I feel like I'm the weakest link. I feel like it shouldn't be as hard as it is for me, and I'm frustrated at my inexperience. Okay. Well, I'm not trying to make you feel frustrated. So, mm-hmm. like, I don't understand. Like, I just, I just need the cabinets to get done. Right. And I just, like, I don't understand why it's that big of a deal to you. Oof. <laughs> And you see how, like, then, in there, what I did is I turned that about myself. Yes. So then how do you want to respond when I say that? So. What's so, happening to you? I would say when you're like, oh, I'm, I'm frustrated because I just want it done and mm-hmm. I don't know why it's frustrating for you. I think I would just be like, gosh, what do I even say to that? I you know can say whatever you want. It's it's not n- more so about how you're feeling about the cabinets. It's more so how I'm just letting you know where I'm at. Okay, well, cabinets. I don't understand why you feel that way. Because, like, it's, the cabinets are done now. So what's the big deal? I think the big deal is that I've never done them before and I'm upset, but at how it went. (laughs) Okay. Good? Yeah. So you see how, like, in that instance, Mm -hmm. I made that about me instead of, and how I'm feeling. Because I might feel that way in the minute. In that moment, I might be like, why is it that big of a deal? It's just fucking cabinets and we're done with it. Yeah. But I missed an opportunity to dig in and like mm-hmm. f- understand where you're coming from with it. Because if you had not dig in, then you would not know that like it's about being an A student. Yes, and that's it where comes that, like, from that trauma of yes. having to perform and do everything right the first time. Right. As opposed to being like, hey, and then that moment I can be like, hey, mm-hmm. like had we spent more time talking, then I would be like, okay, but I feel the same way. Yeah. Like what you're feeling about the trauma of like doing it right and like being an A student, like. Mm-hmm. No one's grading this. It's a okay because, like, I think that it's an A-done project, and I also feel the same way doing my projects. Mm -hmm. So then we have a deeper – I have a deeper understanding of you, but then hopefully as I continue to talk and we go through it, then you will then have a deeper understanding of, like, hey, I'm not judging you or grading you on this. And also I appreciate that it's being done. Mm -hmm. 
And I feel the same way that I have a fear around, like, what if I don't do a good enough job on this? Is everyone else going to judge me? So then Mm -hmm. we've created a safe space where both of us can be like, oh, we have this same common wound. Well, yeah, it's like a connection now, point. Yes. Now, right? As now opposed we've connected to over it. a like area where we separated, where you said, hey, right. now I know to not share this with you. Yep. And it's just that repeat, but that repeating back is so important. And don't get me wrong, like when we did it in therapy, it felt really dumb because you're like, hey, your therapist is there. So you're once again <laughs> feeling like you're being graded. <laughs> they're like feeding um, you your lines. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh. <laughs> there were several times when we would turn to her and be like, um... What do we do now? Yeah. Um, But (laughs) when we started doing it in, like, in real life, when we Mm -hmm. ran into issues, then it was nice because then it was like, okay, like, I mentioned, if you listen to the last episode, Mm -hmm. um, we're doing these projects together. So when I got frustrated because he, when he asked me questions, oftentimes they sound really condescending. Mm -hmm. So then we got to a point of contention And we're just like frustrated, more both flooded with emotions. And we went through that and said, hey, okay, because I was like, we need to do what she said. So I was like, okay, where are you coming from? And we spent time just trying to like get to understand his. And then Mm -hmm. his thing comes down. Like the reason why it sounds super like condescending and shitty Mm -hmm. is because he has a fear of um, like messing up. So he has a fear that he's not going to understand me Mm -hmm. and that it's going to... um, Like, he's going to do a bad job. Mm -hmm. And he wants to know all the steps ahead, but I don't have all the steps Mm -hmm. because I'm figuring out on the fly. But it's not that he's attacking my idea. It's that his own insecurities around, like, not getting it right Right. overwhelm him. So then it becomes this, like, very condescending, like, way in which he asks things. So he's, like, battling his own fear, which then translates into, like, a battle. Like, yes, right? So now, like yesterday, because this happened two days ago. So yesterday when he was asking me questions and I started to like feel those like, you know, like my heckles were coming up that I was like, oof, he's like attacking me. Mm -hmm. Then I had to be like, he's not attacking me. He's mad that he can't see what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Because in these instances, you and I have had that where it's like, I'm the person with this vision that I'm like, this is what I want to do. This is what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. And I don't know all the steps. I just know it, like, as we go. Mm-hmm. Um, because we run into things. So it's all about problem solving. And how frustrating that must be for you guys. Because he's now explained that to me. So that way I'm like, oh, you're not mad at me for not having answers. Because, I, you know, he'll ask me something and then get frustrated if I don't know the answer. And I'm like, we're supposed to be problem solving, man. Mm-hmm. Why are you helping me problem solve? And he's like, well, I can't offer anything in these situations. He's like, because anytime I offer something, it's just the wrong answer. And I was like, to be clear, it's not the wrong answer. Mm -hmm. Like, I was like, okay, so you feel like it's the wrong answer. I was like, but from my perspective, I was like, anytime you offer solutions, like, even if that isn't a solution that we can use at that point, that then inspires more ideas. Right. It'll be cataloged and then internalized. Yes. And turn into something else. Exactly. I was like, so, but what's been happening is that he's been having those discussions internally and then we'll just get defeated, which is why when I look at him, he just looks like he's defeated and doesn't want to be a part of the project. Mm -hmm. But really it's the fact that like, he's already had that entire essentially for lack of a better word, fight inside of his own brain where I'm going to think whatever he has to say is stupid. Mm -hmm. So then he's going to act like whatever I think he's saying is stupid because he's already played it out. So like, yeah, yeah. He's like, okay, I'm tired of now having this fight a second time, but it never happened in the first place. Exactly. So then that allowed us to like get to that place of like understanding. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, okay, yesterday we ran into some obstacles And we were able, where I was like, hey, I need your help here. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know this answer either. And I didn't feel like I was then responsible for providing all the answers. Mm -hmm. Because that's the frustrating part is that when you are like the, for lack of a better way of putting it, it's like the ringleader of a project, everyone turns to you for answers. And there's a lot of pressure on you where I was like, I feel like all the pressure's on me to give you guys answers to be like this, 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 and this. I'm like, but I don't fucking know the answers. I have no idea what I'm doing either. I'm just like making up on the fly. Mm -hmm. But then because we were able to, like, discuss it in a regulated way where I then was just seeking out understanding of him Mm -hmm. and not trying to fix it, not trying to, like, resolve anything, but it's all based around understanding, then the resolutions just naturally happen. That's so cool. And it, like, it feels like at first it feels weird because you're like, okay, that's it. But when it was nice where I was like, okay, well, I said this. And then he's like, what you're saying is that. And I was like. No, I'm not. 
I was actually like, that's what not I'm what I'm saying. Yeah. I was like, uh-huh. what I'm saying is this, this, and this. And then it took like several times of me repeating mm-hmm. for him to finally be able to be like, okay, so you're not attacking me for not knowing something. I'm like, this has nothing to do with you, man. Mm-hmm. I was like, I like, I love you. And like this discussion does, but like what, how I'm feeling purely has to do with me. So it was like yeah. me not internalizing. You saw in that second one where we did mm-hmm. the poor example of it. Right. I internalized your inadequacies and, and got it. defensive and right. made it about me instead mm-hmm. of just like keeping it in your corner. Right. You're like, oh, okay. So like it's, so you're feeling this way because of me, and now it's my job to fix it all. Yes. Instead of being like, or deflecting it mad at you to be like, well, mm-hmm. I'm uncomfortable right now that you because made this you're about uncomfortable. Me. Yes. <laughs> Straight up. Yeah. So it's like, hey, I think it's it's the true conversation example of what Brene would talk about with where it's like, if you're gonna get down, if you're down in the well, I'm gonna get down in the well with you, but I need to know how to get the fuck out. That's stunning. It's a uh, it's almost like a storytelling exercise. It's like a history book exercise mm-hmm. where it's like, okay, so you're feeling these emotions. Because if we had not done that, like, I wouldn't have, like, fully unlocked that, like, yeah, it's a shame thing. Yeah. It's about being a straight-A student and getting it right the first time because that's how straight-A students do it. Yep. They don't look like they're struggling. They just know how to do it. And then mm-hmm. they get the best grade out of it, you know? Yeah. Well, because Huge. that's that straight-A part of, like, you can't show that you're struggling. No. That's that part <laughs> of the, where people get really weirded out when you're like, hey, I'm having a hard time. And they're like, ah! And you're like, don't do that. I'm trying to be honest about the fact that I'm having a hard time. Mm-hmm. Totally. And this gives you that space because then, like, the point is to, like, make sure that we don't move on mm-hmm. to, like, how I feel about something mm-hmm. until we fully understand how you feel about it, which is why we end with, like, is there anything else you want me to know? Right. Because then if there is, we continue that conversation yeah. until you feel fully heard and understood. And right. then I can tell you. Mm-hmm. how I feel about a situation. Right. And then that's why when I asked, we cut it off and we're like, wait, let's give the other example first mm-hmm. because that's the second part. Yeah. The you... second part would then be about how I feel mm-hmm. about that situation. Mm-hmm. So then we would go into like, you would then, we would just flip. So you right. would then be in a place of like in the listener's chair mm-hmm. and I would be in the storytelling chair. Mm-hmm. And then it would be my time to say, and the same thing where you have to be like, okay, it's not about you. Your job there is like, it's if you think about it, yeah, I'm reading your to, history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just to be a historian and be like, okay, where is this coming from? Mm-hmm. And then it allows both of you to understand and see each other. Cool. Yeah, dude, it's so dope. So that's how couples therapy is going. That's phenomenal. Yeah. So you guys are working on meta emotions after this, like your next session. Will um. Be- yeah, yeah. Probably. Okay. Cool. I mean, we've had to have like a month break because she's out of town. Mm-hmm. Um, and she was super nice. She was like, oh, we can do like via like tele like web, but she's like on vacation. I was like, nah, bitch, you don't have to work. Like don't work. Yeah. Yeah. Let's remove as many clients as you need to while you're like on vacation and go be on vacation. Like our marriage will survive. Like, yeah. So that way she's also rest and recharged for all of her clients. Yeah. Like that's huge. Cause I'm like, I'm not, well that, and I just think it's shitty when you're on vacation and then you have to work. Mm -hmm. And I understand that her job is one, but like, that's also a job I want to do in the future. And I would like to be able to take vacations and actually be on vacation. So when I'm like, we're not in like dire straits, like we're in a solid place. Mm -hmm. So we can at least be like, Hey, we're in a good place. Like we'll survive for a month. Yeah. Although I'm really excited to, like, continue to learn these things. What a cool fucking thing. That's very Yeah. Very cool. Because very, very I cool. feel like when you have conflict, that's such a great way of, like, just, or just, like, a misunderstanding. Such a great way of, like, dismantling that. And then, for me, conflicts, fights, all of that is just designed to be a place where you can learn more about someone. Mm-hmm. And that's what that feels like to me. I think that's the icky part about conflict or, like, fights between your partners is oftentimes you walk away not knowing Mm -hmm. anything and that's where the ickiness comes from is like the whole like okay well i now don't understand you and you don't understand me and we're both pissed yeah and you just feel alone yeah exactly and that then makes you because you get to then see where it's like in that instance where you feel inadequate Mm -hmm. but i'm like bitch i feel the same way it's it is very refreshing when you show me texts of like the same way about like i don't know what the fuck i'm doing and like this is hard texts of like you telling caboose like i'm scared to start this project like whoa and then him just be like i got this that was refreshing to know Mm -hmm. that like okay so everyone feels this way this is just a different sport like i'm I'm yeah there. yeah i'm becoming a diy girly <laughs> she's becoming a diy girly i i don't think i, I think it's because i never i don't know i was too young to become one yeah 
So it's that, like... You started off as you were born and then forced into it. <laughs> yeah. So to me, I'm like, I never got to become a DIY girl. I've had to become, like, a rested girly. Where there we I'm like, go. oh, vacation mode. Yes. Which is probably why I make a bigger deal out of that, because that, for me, was, like, a harder transition. Speaking of, we're getting ready for Halloween Horror Nights, right? Well, by the time this comes out, we'll have just gotten back. Um, or we'll be on the plane back. Can I ask you... Okay. You want to get your nails done, what color are you thinking? Oh, my toenails? Yeah. Um, I don't know yet. I have to see what the options are. That's right. I have to see if, like, the chick has openings, because okay. I'm going to go get my hair cut today, because I'm, like, it's in dire need of a trim. My plan to do, to prep for Halloween Horror Nights, I'm going to uh, do laundry. That's always a big thing. But I'm <laughs> going to deep clean my bathroom. I'm going to water nice. my plants. I'm going yeah, to get the house ready. Yeah, we have to get the house ready. I'm going to vacuum my room. It's going to be, like, a whole turnaround thing. So that's basically my plan for today. Nice. That's a good solid plan. Thank you. Sure. Um, we did not do it last time, so we'll end this episode on okay. what's your win for the week? My win for the week is being vulnerable on the podcast as per usual. Love that. Love crying on the podcast every <laughs> other episode. Um, I think my win for the week is, yeah, being authentic, vulnerable, and honest. Like, it's that's always a win, but, like, especially in this episode, fuck, I told you guys that I love fan fiction, and I have a fake uh, vampire boyfriend. Love him. Um, shout out. <laughs> and I also uncovered a few things about like shame and like starting new things. You know what? Not knowing how to do something is beautiful. That's gorgeous. It's an opportunity for growth. It's an opportunity to decide whether or not you really like it. I do like doing DIY things. I like doing them. It makes me feel proud. I feel I think it does. Honestly, I think it does for a lot of people. I think mm-hmm. that like it's healing. Like Yeah. Just being able to do those things. Because, like, that, it's kind of that trickle effect of, like, once you can do little bits, then you're like, fuck it. I can just do whatever. Because you're like, well, I figured out how to do that. I'll figure out how to do this. Totally. And especially, like, in the case, like, we are very, we're in a very fortunate place where we are not super duper broke. Mm -hmm. So, like, Caboose made a a wrong cut on, like, a piece of, like, um, wood last night. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, so just go buy another piece of wood. It's fucking $5. And it doesn't have that high risk that it did, like, in my early 20s, where, like, I spilled a gallon of paint. Every cent. And I fucking sobbed. A gallon is a lot. Oh, yeah. I, like, (laughs) tipped over in Caboose's trunk on his very brand new vehicle. Um, It stayed there until we sold it. Um, (laughs) And it was this, like, huge traumatizing thing. And I think that's the part where, like, experience comes in, is it's like, dude, it's never gonna come out perfect in the sense that, like... You know, you you look at it and you're like, there are zero flaws, but the flaws are also what make it beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. Like, that's what makes it real. Like, you know, when I painted that circle, I was like, oh, this circle is not perfect. Mm-hmm. And the stupid part about, like, Pinterest is that it makes it look like it's A, super easy, and painting a circle <laughs> on a wall is fucking hard, you guys. A hundred percent. We were talking about the whole tattooing analogy. So, yeah, right now I'm basically learning the basics of tattooing. I can't, like... That's why, like, portraits seem so scary to me. And a cabinet is not a portrait in the tattoo in that at all. But you know what I mean? Like, yep. it's like baby steps, right? But we're getting there. There's only one way to do it, and that's to fuck around. And not knowing how to do something is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Okay, what's your win for the week? Um, My win for the week is using, in real life, using our new founded conflict resolution. Yeah. And, like, having a deeper understanding for my husband. That's amazing. And also watching telly last night when I just needed to decompress. Yep. That, that was, was a big dope. win. I was so fucking proud of you. <laughs> yeah, because you walk by. So you guys, like, Caboose installed, like, a TV in our bedroom. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, like, swiveled because we have a small little, like, space where it's at. And we swapped out for, like, a better TV because we're trying to get all of our appliances before we moved to New Zealand mm-hmm. because electronics are really expensive. So he swapped out the TV. Yeah, I want to upgrade like, my phone before we go. <laughs> turn it. What? You, you probably have to get a phone there. Probably. Um... I watched a YouTube video on it, and I don't think I do. Oh. Um, but I do have to, like, disconnect the line and, you know, obviously okay. yeah. reconnect. New- I don't think I do, though. But um, I- I'm going to have to double <laughs> I watched a video on yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, she came upstairs and I was just watching TV. Mm-hmm. Like, trying to, like, decompress and relax so that way today I could get all the stuff. Because every time we go on a trip, there's lots to be done. Oh, absolutely. So, and even though, like, it's fun and vacation, with our jobs, there's still, like, a lot that has to be done in order to take a couple of days off of work. Yeah. So. So that's the, that's the goal. We're going to probably But, yeah. Relaxing and conflict resolution. Thank Those you, Those are my wins. 
Thank you so yep. much for listening. We love you so much. Appreciate you. Um, and then our next episode will honestly probably be about Halloween Horror Nights. So, because we are coming back from Halloween Horror Nights as this is being released. So, wish us luck. Hopefully, it was dope. Oh, I'm so um, excited. And then we will see you guys back next week. Love you. Bye. The butt that every time.